DIY friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danny, your friendly neighborhood DIYer, and this is it, the last and final episode, part three of my DIY journey to make over my master bedroom. <sighs> I mean, we might as well just compare this to the three-part Lord of the Rings trilogy for what we have tackled. I mean, we rallied the fellowship in part one and went on a journey to a greater lands. We laid down the land in battle towers but saw the light at the end of the tunnel. And alas, in part three, the final end to it all. We're gonna get out of Mordor, friends. We're gonna get out of Mordor. This has all been a part of Homemade Home, a series where I take you on my DIY journey to make over my 150 year old plus farmhouse into a home that I love. So if you're new here to this channel, welcome, subscribe, join this wonderful community of DIY enthusiasts. And if you have not seen part one and two, I have linked it in the description box. Go watch those first. We don't go watch Return of the King without watching The Fellowship and The Two Towers. That's just blasphemy. And if you're returning, then you guys are just as eager as me to finish this journey. Let's get the heck out of Mordor and roll the tape. Boop. Tire. Really hard time with this. We are in the master bedroom. And the last time that I saw you, we added a light. We added these. Oh, in the meantime, I've added some baskets up top for extra storage because as you know, I couldn't do the built-in look because I have an attic um, entrance way. So that just would have been really awkward. So I went and sourced these small slim baskets off of Amazon. I think they look pretty good. We have a bunch of DIYs to tackle. So are you with me? Let's go finish this bedroom so that I can go to bed. <laughs> The first DIY project I'm tackling are my side tables. I didn't want anything big and bulky as a side table because of those slanted ceilings. I'm already fighting a lot of space. When it comes to side tables, both Jeff and I don't really need a lot of side table. So I decided to go a little unconventional with this and I thrifted two wooden stools. Of course, I didn't want to leave them blonde, so I pulled out my chalk paint stash and used the Andy Sloan color Old White. This step really wasn't necessary, but I did decide to sand each stool first. You can pretty well paint over anything with chalk paint without prepping it, but I always think giving your piece a light sand is always good practice. It just ensures any paint you add will stick that much better. I ended up applying two coats to each stool and I just loved the simplicity of these. Very cute, minimal, and kind of fell in line with my farmhouse vibe. Also, I should note that I do end up putting a wax coat on top of these stools. I do this off camera. The wax coat just gives it a really nice protective layer. I always say put two coats on. I just always find two coats do really well. I always apply the wax on top, take a cloth, and then I rub the wax into the wood grain to really get it in there. And then the second coat, I just do a really, really light wax top coat. So that's my recommendation. I am going to start working on the shaker peg coat racks. Yes, I know. No, we're doing it again. We're gonna be putting in the shaker peg rack right here and it's gonna be going into the angled part. It's really hard to figure out what that angle is just by eyeballing it. So I have this multi-angled ruler. This thing is a game changer. So what's gonna happen is I'm actually going to line this up to my angle. I'm gonna lock this in place and then I'm gonna take a I don't know why I didn't finish that sentence. I'm going to take a level. So I'm just going to level this out. So now I know exactly what my angle needs to be. So when I go to draw it on my board, I can just mark this angle and Bob's your uncle. Susie's your aunt. Let's try something new for once. Now there are digital versions of this out there, but I like this tool. It doesn't require batteries. It's never going to die. You invest in it once and you'll probably have it with you for the rest of your life. Not to mention, you can make some really cool letters with this. You can make a W for Wonder Woman. You can make an S for subscribe. Help me get to 200,000, please. 
Okay, so I had my angle, I had my wall measurement, and like any shaker peg rack that I have built on this channel, which has been many times, I cut my board on the chop saw, walked back to the bedroom to do a, whoa, uh, do I need new socks? <clears throat> Went back to the wall to do a dry fit, and yes, it's good to go, my friends. Oh yeah. I then measured and marked out where I wanted my pegs to be. I normally eyeball this first to what looks good to the eye and then I just adjust using proper math and then use my drill press to drill my holes. Finally, to finish this off, I filled my holes with wood glue, hammered in my shaker pegs with a mallet and finished it off by painting them the same color as my bedroom walls. This was Silky White by Bear in Flat. So look at that, I had two stools already made, I had two shaker peg racks already made, I mean, I was just flying in the DIY space. However, I still had one more DIY to do that day and uh, this one was a little bit more unique. Uh, I'm going to attempt to give this a name, but I have no idea what to call it. So we're just gonna say it's a DIY twig planter, no, twig, tree planter. Twig, can you say twig and tree in the same sentence? Bear tree planter, no. DIY twig. Let's just trust the process on this one, okay? So I headed into my backyard to find some perfect twigs. I have this really cool kind of whomping willow looking tree back there and thought for sure I would find something. And I wasn't really seeing the kind of long, thin branches that I was looking for, so I realized I had to go to the greater outdoors. I'm on a mission to find the perfect sticks for my DIY, so we're going on an adventure into the forest. I am literally in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Here's hoping I survive. Really close to my house, I have this beautiful little walking trail that's right along this beautiful stream. So I went there knowing I could find something. I gotta be on the hunt. I want like something that's like tall and lots of little sticks. Like I don't want it to be too heavy. I don't have enough hands, so I'm going to put this away and then I will update you on when I find my sticks. Okay, so I got lucky. I saw all of these kind of like trees that had fallen over and this beautiful red dogwood. I think that's what it's called, a redwood, red dogwood. So basically I just kind of took it from the fallen tree. That's not as bad, right? Okay, let's bring this home. Let's finish this DIY. To make this, tree plotted thing. I went and got this beautiful pot. This is actually from a place in Canada called Canadian Tire. Pretty sure it's only in Canada. What I did like about this is the texture on it. So I'll show the close up here. There's this beautiful texture on it and I just think it's going to be so lovely in the bedroom. And I also picked up, I went to the dollar store and I picked up a bunch of this like floral foam. That's really hard to say, floral foam. And on top of that, I picked up some moss. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna jam pack all of this floral foam into this vessel. And then we're gonna start to kind of like style it with the sticks and hopefully it turns into something. So let's do that. Oh, I hate the sound of that. Oh, uh, it's like hot. Oh, I don't like the feeling of this. Ah, okay, hold on. <laughs> I can still feel it. Okay, let's just get through this. I literally have goosebumps thinking of that floral foam. Uh, it just, it reminds me of cotton. So trigger warning for all my cotton fearing friends because I know you're out there now. I am not alone in this. I feel good knowing that I'm not alone. <laughs> Getting over my fear, I stuffed the planter full of this foam and made it as tight as possible. Tire. Really hard time with this. Then simply moved to the floor due to the height that this DIY was going to be and began pruning my twigs and placing them in the foam as I saw fit. 
Honestly, doing this was like doing the Ikebana practice. It's the art of flower arranging. And it's really cool because I found this thing online that said, Ikebana is not just about sticking a flower into a vase. It's about the love and need of the artist to create beautiful forms. Ikebana is not just about flowers. It's about the person who arranges them. Isn't that nice? And I do get that because I was kind of trying to create this beautiful form that would look good. Yeah, I don't know. Just love it, love it. So now that I'm kind of like happy with my tree, we're going in with the moss. It's getting mossy. I don't know what that means. Basically, I just took the moss and filled in the base to cover all the floral foam and that was it. When I was happy with the final look, I ended up taking a small dainty set of twinkle lights and strung it up the tree. I was going for a vibe and it was working. Trilinda, that's what you're being called, Trilinda. Very cute. I kind of want to see it in place, so let's go put it in the bedroom. Oh yes, is that not my vision come to life? Ah! Sorry, I screamed, I'm just excited. How easy was that DIY? Very fun, and we got an adventure out of it, so bonus. I'm gonna do the less fun stuff off camera. Oh, excuse me. I gotta do, fill in some with uh, the cracks with caulking, just for the trim, get the curtains up. Oh, she's gonna be beautiful in here. So I'm gonna go do that, and I'll see you tomorrow. Do I love you more than life? I do, okay, sorry. Good morning! Do we feel good in this beautiful, bright bedroom? Oh my goodness! I just love this! I went to bed last night and the lights were on and it was just like such a good vibe. I could stop now and I would be perfectly happy. However, we're building a headboard today and it's gonna be epic. So, I'm such a big fan of Lynn and Tristan Dalton. If you don't follow them on Instagram, I will link their account below. And they're constantly inspiring me but this headboard thing has really got me feeling frustrated is a good word to use. You guys know me, I have like a bajillion different ideas and for this headboard, I had a bajillion different ideas. <laughs> Originally, I was going to do like a, a side piece and then it was going to arch all the way over and I was talking to Sam the DIY Huntress she like drew up a whole design for me because she's wonderful like that I'll show it to you on screen this was the design idea we were gonna do layered and then I got thinking well see how high the bed is and then where the slant starts if I put pillows there and then there's an arch you're never gonna see it the pillows are just gonna cover it then I as I was saying I went on Lynn and Tristan's blog and I saw something that caught my eye. This is their beautiful rental space. In one of the main cabins, there's a bed that sits upstairs and it looks down onto the main area. And there's this beautiful banister that kind of had this like intricate design where it would come, two pieces of wood would have this like circle taken out of it. And you guys can see it there, That's it's in white. Something about that just spoke to me. I was like, that is interesting here we go i'm gonna like quickly draw this out for you guys so that i can also see it in my head basically i want to create a banister that runs on the top it's gonna have some kind of detailing like there's gonna be two pieces that run here and then on the side it's gonna run down and then essentially we're gonna go a board here and it's gonna be here and then we're gonna do another one at the bottom. And then we're gonna have a second board, we're gonna have the little half circle, and then we're gonna do another one at the bottom. And then we're gonna start another one. On the original design idea, these guys here were in the middle. So I'm creating that detail a little bit higher, and I'm also gonna add it on the bottom. The bed will sit right here, and you'll have, you know, there will be pillows here. By allowing it to kind of come off the bed a little bit, we're still allowing for that detail to show. This drawing is amazing. We know. <laughs> so that's the idea. Now we just gotta go make it. So let's go do that. And did that I did. First moving the bed off the wall so I could take proper measurements. I was also mapping out just how big I wanted it to be. And because I'm a total visual person, I decided to use painter's tape to sort of just draw it out on the wall to get an idea of scale and look. Do you see it? Are you with me? Like visually, that's kind of how it's gonna be. I think this is gonna work. 
To create this DIY headboard, I was using three pieces of lumber, a one by six knotty pine, one by two pine, and one piece of pine ply cap, which is meant to sit on a ledge of another board. To get started, it was off to the she shack. I go to cut the top and bottom rail pieces. From there, I tacked the rails onto the wall in the bedroom to one, make sure my math did in fact properly map out okay, and two, to measure the distance from the top rail to the bottom because if you're familiar with my home, all the walls are slanted and wonky. And funny enough, the left side of my bedroom measures at 43 inches high, and on the other side, it measures 40 inches high. Isn't that insane? There's literally a dip of three inches along that wall. You would never see this to the eye, but that is insane to me. So once I had my measurements, it was back to the she shack to cut all my one by six boards. Cue the music. Once all my boards were cut from there, it was time to measure out where my holes were going to go. So I measured down five inches. This would be the top of the first hole and then 26 inches for the second. Then using a four inch hole saw and my drill, I clamped each board set together and used the middle of the two boards as my placing guide for the hole saw. Look at that, one hole down, 15 more to go. Then it was just sand them down and they were ready to be stained. Okay, so all the boards are set up. I brought in another platform and the color I'm staining as always is special walnut. Would you guys expect any less from me? <laughs> so let's get staining. Isn't it so satisfying to watch someone stain a board? I don't know, I just love it so much. But I will say this, I highly recommend that you pre-treat your wood using a wood conditioner. I didn't do this on this board. It's got a very pungent smell and it always makes me feel nauseous so I like to do it outside. But it was so cold that day that I couldn't go outside to do it. So I just kind of decided not to do it. By using it, it actually allows the wood to take to the stain color so much better. Highly recommend it for you. <laughs> Every single board is currently stained, stained, stained. There we go. Well, that was a day. Very much enjoyed that day. We are so close. Because my wall is so wonky, it actually does me better to just build it on the wall. So that's what I'm gonna do and keep it easy. So tonight I'm gonna put on a finish on all the boards once this is dry. Tomorrow we can bring this whole room together. Very excited. Stay with me. See you tomorrow. started real early on day three. I think it was about seven o'clock when I was doing this. I wanted to get a good start on the second coat of finish. I was putting that headboard on the wall that day, so I had to get this done early so it could dry in time by the time I was ready to actually do that. <sighs> Sometimes a girl just gotta get up early, you know? So like I mentioned previously, my plan was to simply just assemble the headboard right on the wall. This is going to let me adjust any of the boards should my bath be not up to snuff due to some janky walls. I simply made sure the first board was straight using my level and secured it in with my brad nailer, measured over one inch and secured the second board. After one set was done, I then measured over an inch and a half and then started it all over again. I think I got through two sets before I broke down and went downstairs to create two little jigs of one inch and one and a half. I don't know why I didn't do this before. So now I can just work my way across and you don't have to worry about measurements. Like, why didn't you do that from the start? I don't want to talk about it. So basically it was all hunky dory at that point. I was just popping up boards, securing them with my brad nail until I got to the last set where as I expected, there was trouble with the length of the boards. So I ended up having to trim it. To keep a really long story short, 
when I had originally measured how long the board needed to be, I hadn't secured the baseboard to the wall yet, but once the baseboard actually got secured, it actually ended up raising up a little bit, which then obviously offset my measurements. That last set was like literally an inch off. And to make things worse, the wall was actually starting to slant really badly. So I ended up having to cut it at a degree that didn't exist on my miter saw. So it just got really complicated. I ended up cutting it wrong. It just went bad and then it was too short. So what I ended up doing was taking boards from the middle of the headboard, putting it over there and fixing my issue and then kind of hid my mistake in an area where you would never see it. I am telling you guys this because you guys know I like to be transparent about all the screw ups that I do. I'm just gonna put it in the middle where you'll never see it and uh, I think it all kind of worked out. Okay, there it is. My beautiful little rustic headboard. I think it looks pretty cute. Go math. Either way, the hard part was over and for the rest of the day, I simply secured both my peg racks to the wall, got my curtain rod and beautiful sheer curtains hung in the window, added this cute little decorative element in the middle and finished the day off by bringing in my adorable antique chair that I acquired from my grandmother. And you guys know how much I love having a piece of family in my home. So that went into the corner of the room with this little throw and that was it for the day. I mean, yes, please. <laughs> Good morning, DIY friends. Today is the final countdown. No, it, it's the last day of the DIY design and I'm gonna say I might cry because I've gone through so much to get this room to where it is. And there's just a few more elements that need to come in here and then we can kind of start bringing all the little, the little decor pieces that just make it feel so much special. But I do want to show you one thing that Jeffrey and I did last night. The shaker door is in. Look how lovely it is. I mean, it needs to be painted. That's gonna get done today, but it just looks so good. And then with the cabinet, I'm excited. I'm gonna get going on this day because it all just needs to come together so that I can go to bed. Let's go start with DIYing some lights. So before I show you the lights that I got, I wanna explain something. Before I knew I was going to go with these lights, I had these wall sconces that secure to the wall. But after I started kind of seeing the room come together, it was very apparent that I should use the slanted ceiling to my advantage and hang something off that slanted ceiling. So I wanted to find something antique. I had something in my mind. I'll show you a picture of what I had in mind. I wanted to find an antique version version of this and I've seen them before. So I ended up calling a local vintage shop and they did have them. They wanted $275 for these lights and I was just like, girl just ain't that rich. But I was definitely determined to find something antique at this point. So in my searching, I ended up stumbling upon this light. These two pendants were connected to one unit at the top to make a chandelier. But I saw it and thought, I could rewire these and make them separate. I think it could be pretty cute. Now, the brass was super dark on these lights, so I did end up spray painting it with a brass metallic spray paint just to give it a little bit of brightness. And I think it just brightened it up a little and helped match all the other brass elements in the bedroom. And once that was dry, I simply bought a new clear six foot wire to replace the old one and two new medium base sockets. From there, I just fed my new wire through the light, hooked up my hot neutrals to the socket, secured that socket to the mounting plate on the light and voila, we have a new light. Now all I had to do was just rewire one more. Installing the light was very easy. I just used a butterfly hook in the ceiling and hung the light on an old pre-existing chain that came with the light. Very cute. <laughs> At this point, all I had left to do was add all the finishing touches. I got a new piece of art hung on the wall. I love this art piece. It is so cute and I love kind of the minimalism of it. I will link that art piece if you love it as well down below. I also added these two adorable mini antique photos near my vanity and I got my carpet in place, all of my bedding on the bed. Well, sort of. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that bed was just so comfy. 
I added all my pillows and extra baskets. And then last, I organized all my makeup and my beauty stuff onto this utility cart that I can now either roll into the bathroom when I needed it or keep beside my vanity. Such a versatile little cart. I love me some organization. <laughs> Whew! My DOA friends, this has been a long journey. I know it's been a while, so let's just remind ourselves exactly where this bedroom started so we can really appreciate the end result. <laughs> if you remember, we had these icky vinyl floors, dark wall colors, bulky dressers, no side tables, one dank looking ceiling light. Yeah, I was bad. Well, here it is, friends. I give you my bright, airy, natural, nature-inspired, cozy master bedroom. This makeover reflected everything I wanted this bedroom to be. Peaceful, calming, light, rejuvenating. I just wanted it to reflect a piece of everything both Jeff and I worked so hard for. This was our place and I am just so, so grateful for this journey. <laughs> I didn't think I would get emotional about it, but it's just, it's been such a good time. And you know, it was so nice that my family was able to come together and rally to make this bedroom feel as amazing as it does. And I don't know, it was just, it was such a journey that I could never change. And uh, whew, okay, I'm gonna pull myself together. The funny thing is, is that I really don't even feel like this bedroom is finished. I am convinced that there is so much more that can be done in this room. You know, I think I had to get the bedroom to a place where it is now to be able to just reflect and grow on that. I'm excited to bring something more into that room over time and really show some unique DIYs that can really elevate the space, so stay tuned. Let me know in the comments section, what was your favorite DIY that went into this space? Was it the ceiling light, the tree planter, maybe the headboard? Always a toss up, but I'm always so interested to know what you guys think. So let me know in the comment section below. Also, as you guys know, my guest room was being made over, not by me, but my wonderful friend, Alexandra Gator. She came in that very same week to make over the second bedroom and it just turned out beautiful. Please, I've linked that video down in my description. Go watch that now. These two room designs are night and day. That's my little hint. So go check it out. Go give her some support and love. Also just a big shout out to Ikea for really helping me turn this into the space of my dreams. That Pax wardrobe is just honestly so spectacular. I couldn't have done it without you guys. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome as always. Stay positive, stay creative, and keep on DIYing. Bye-bye.